Greetings Humanoid Variants. In a previous video, I messed around with an ES Cam IP camera. It was the ES Cam Snail QD500. I got a comment from Rich Gauchi asking, how would you stream the software remotely? That's a great question, and that's what I'm going to try to answer today. Say you're out on the go, and you have your laptop, and you're tethered wirelessly using your smartphone connected to the internet, and you want to view your IP camera at home. Right here's a network switch, and this is a computer on the network. Right here's the home router, and it has two IP addresses. It's got an external IP address and an internal IP address. The trick to be able to see this camera from outside your network is to use the external IP address of your home router in VLC or some other media player that can view the IP camera's video stream. Now there's one more thing you have to do, and that is port forwarding. In your home router you have to set up a port that will be dedicated for video traffic. The reason you have to do port forwarding is because your router doesn't know which device on the home network the laptop wants to connect to. So say the laptop wants to connect to port 3000. It sends out a request on port 3000 that gets to your home router. And your home router doesn't know what to do with it at that point. Usually it would drop a connection like this. If you port forward port 3000 to your IP camera, then a request on port 3000 will get to the router and the router's like, hey, there's a port forward rule set up. The rule says I need to port forward port 3000 to the IP camera. What are these ports? Is it an Ethernet port? Or a C port? No. What are ports? In non-technical terms, you could think of ports like channels on a TV. Some channels are for dedicated programs. Other channels have more than one program that runs on them. Ports are virtual channels on your computer that data goes through. Some programs use a specific port to send and retrieve their data. Other programs assign a port at random. File transfer protocol uses port 21. If you've ever run a website yourself, you might have used this to transfer files from your computer to the server that's hosting your web page. Hypertext transfer protocol uses port 80. HTTP is used to deliver web pages to your computer. Most of what you see in your browser uses port 80. There are some fancy ports, like Warcraft 3 uses port 6112. The ES cam uses two ports, port 554 for RTSP, a protocol that establishes the connection, and port 40,000, for which I'm assuming is the port used to transfer video. Let's do some port forwarding. I'm here at the web GUI of my home router, 192.168.1.1. I'm going to log in here. Every router is going to be different, but you'll want to look for the port forwarding section. You can find a more detailed guide on how to port forward your specific router at the website portforward.com. Anyway, on mine, I go to the setup section, and then there's the forwarding link. On my router, I need to add a custom service for the IP camera. So I go to service management. I'm going to give the service a name. I'm going to call it camera RTSP. The protocol is TCP. And the port range is 554 to 554. Then I'll add it to the list. It's there at the bottom and I'll push save or OK. Now I need to make one more service. This one's going to be camera video. This one's also TCP. The port range is 40,000 to 40,000. I'll add to the list. There it is at the bottom, and I'll click OK. Now that the page has refreshed, I'll be able to see the new services I set up in this list here. There's the camera RTSP. I'm going to go ahead and select it. Then I'll choose the IP address of the ES camera, IP camera. That address is 192.168.1. One dot ten. I'll click Enable and Add to the List. So this is an instruction telling the router when it gets a packet on external TCP port 554, forward it to the IP address 192.168.1.10, which is the IP camera. I'm going to go back to the services list and choose the camera video service. I'll enter the 
IP address of the IP camera, 192.168.1.10. Click Enable and add to the list. Make sure it's there at the bottom, which it is. And finally, I will save. Like I said, every router is going to have a different process for this. You'll have to find out the process for your router. Some routers may even require a reboot of the router once you make these changes. Mine does not. Our port forwarding is now set up. On to the next step. The next step is to find the external IP address of the home router. We need this so when we're on the go with our laptop, we know what IP address to put in. We can try the website yougetsignal.com to see what the current external IP address is of my home router. You can click this what is my IP address link. A few weeks ago when I worked on this video, my home router's external IP address was completely different. Back then, it was 184.97.100.73. Now, it's 174.31.26.140. Isn't that odd? This is actually a common practice among residential internet service providers. There are a number of reasons for the IP address to change, but I won't get into those. Because of this, if we're on the go and we connect to 174.31.26.140, we might be able to see the ESCAM video feed one day, and then the next day, we can't see the stream anymore. We need to work around this, and there are simple services available to do just this. I'm going to show you my favorite, noap.com. Here you can see their headline, Remote Access with Dynamic DNS, or DDNS, the freedom to connect to your devices from anywhere. Perfect. Let's sign in or create an account. Hey, no IP takes Bitcoin. There are some conveniences provided with a paid account, but for what we're doing, we can use a free account. What we want to do is add a host. All right, what you do is you choose a host name, something unique to you. I'm choosing Chris ESCAM Network, and then choose a domain name to use. Um, I'm choosing noap.org. What this does for you is noap creates a subdomain on their domain, noap.org. When requests go to this subdomain, they're forwarded to the current external IP address of your home router. For the host type, we use DNS host, or A. All these other settings can be left at their defaults. And then just scroll down and click Add Host. Cool, the host is created. Here's the IP address detected by the NoIP Dynamic Updater client. Yours probably won't show this right away. Mine only shows this because I've already created the host and downloaded the Dynamic Updater client. Remember that computer I showed in the diagram that's running on the same network as the ESCAM? We'll need that now. On the left column of NoIP, you'll see a download client link. Go ahead and click that and head to the download page. Here we go, I'm on a Mac, so I'm downloading the Mac version of the Dynamic Updater client. If you're using Windows or even Linux, there are alternative options for you. Once that's downloaded, go ahead and install it on that computer on the same network as the ESCAM. This program will optionally run as a system service, and every hour or so, update no IP with your home router's current external IP address. This means that whenever a request goes to chrisescam.noip.org, it will be redirected to the appropriate IP address of my home router. Therefore, I can use chrisescam.noip.org to remotely view the ESCAM video feed. Now that we've got everything configured, Let's try to do a test and see if we can remotely get a video feed from our ESCAM. For this test, using my laptop, I wirelessly connected to my cell phone's wireless hotspot. Okay, here I'm opening up VLC Media Player. This is a free download. It's a very high quality media player. I'm going to go to File Open Network Stream and I'll get this dialog here. The dialog says, please enter a network URL. This is where we're going to enter a long string of text which shows the protocol to use, RTSP, the host name, here we're using the IP address, and then the root path and parameters. The parameters are the ESCAM's way of being able to log in with the username and password. The username is admin, the password is blank, the channel is 1, and the stream is 0. Here in this video, I'm having difficulty connecting to the camera. What was happening was, after I clicked play, the screen resolution would resize, but no video would come through. This is because I'm using the standard stream, uh, stream number zero, in the parameters. This is a high resolution stream, which is difficult for me to load on my internet connection. This can be solved by changing the stream equals zero to stream equals one. This tells VLC to load the low quality stream, or the second stream, from the camera. 
This is just a lower resolution video, which is better suited for loading over the internet. So we'll try to connect again. There it is. Cool, there's a little guy. Okay, now let's actually try the noap subdomain. chrisescamnetwork.noap.org A big note, if you don't put a password on this stream, anybody who has the URL can view your camera. There's likely programs out there that are running, scanning for people's home security cameras. So, do yourself a favor and put a password on your camera. Dance, little guy, dance! Well, folks, we've arrived at the end of the video. I'll go over a quick recap. We port forwarded TCP ports 554 and 40,000 to the ESCAM's IP address. We installed the NoAP Dynamic DNS Updater Client on the computer on the same network as the ESCAM. On the NoAP website, we associated this computer with chrisescamnetwork.noap.org. You may need to do some troubleshooting in this process. UGIT Signal has a really great port forwarding tester. It auto detects your IP address, and all you need to do is enter in the port you want to check. Let's check 554 now. Port 554 is closed. If it's closed, that means the outside world can't access your camera. I expected this because I just unplugged my camera. Let's plug it back in. Let's check it again. Great! This is a good thing to try if you're not able to connect using VLC. I hope that was helpful to you. Or if you don't have this camera, hopefully it was a little bit of fun to watch. That's it for now. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.